We are up to the Ming and the Qing, 1368 to 1911, the two last dynasties in China. Ming is to, I think, 1644 is when Ming ends. Establishment of the Ming, 1368, Zhu Yuan Zhang, later known as Emperor Taiju, established the Ming Dynasty in Nanjing. 1421, Emperor Chengju moved the capital to Beijing. Upon founding the Ming, Emperor Taiju formulated new laws and introduced reforms that concentrated the legislative, administrative, jurisdictional, military, and supervisory powers in his hands. Centralized authoritarian, authoritarian rule reached a new height. Blue and white porcelain vase with dragon among flowers designed Ming Dynasty Wan Li era from Chongming, Beijing. Chang Ming, Chan Ping, Beijing. Blue and white porcelain flask, dragons among clouds and sea waves, Ming Dynasty Yangle era. Blue and white vase with two lugs and intertwining branches design. Xuan Di era. Blue and white porcelain Jun vessel with Ling Ji fungus design. Ming Dynasty Xuan Di era. That was an annoying group that just came through. White glazed porcelain vase and size with intertwining lotus design. Ming Dynasty Yongle era. White glazed porcelain jar in size with floral design. White glazed porcelain produced by Huang official. Uh, one of the official kilns, the Guan, during the Yongle era, was known for its fine quality and pure color. As gentle as jade, resulting from low iron content. The color evokes a sweet feeling, hence it was also referred to as Tianbai, sweet white porcelain. Tianbei. Tianbei. White glazed porcelain bowl, Yangle era. Yangli Da Dian, great canon of Yangle era replica. Da Ming Lu, Coda Great Ming, block printed edition, Ming Dynasty 30th year, Hongwu era. Household Registration Certificate Ming Dynasty. This certificate was issued by the Ming government 1371 to a man named Jiang Shu of Qinmen County, present day Xixian, Anhui Province. Fish scale registers in the early Ming. Parcels of land were measured and documented in a register. The layout of the registers looked a bit like fish scales and became known as fish scale registers. Wasteland Reclamation Certificate issued a peasant named Wang Yishang from the Ming Dynasty. There's the Great Wall. Wooden seal of the Imperial Guard. Ming Dynasty set up in 1382 to control officials and civilians, the Imperial Guard. Jing Wei was directly under the Emperor and had special courts and prisons. Copper Seal. 
Ming Dynasty. This was the official seal of the military command of Mu Dai Li, Mountain Guard, present day Ulanha, Inner Mongolia, established 1406. Copper Tally, Ming Dynasty. Soldiers on night patrol at Beiping Transitory Military Commission near present day Ningcheng, later Inner Mongolia. Use this tally as a pass while on duty. Copper tally. Hong Wu era. Nanjing, Jiangsu province military guards use this tally as a pass to enter or exit the imperial city in the capital Nanjing during the Hong Wu era. Ivory tally. Ming Dynasty Palace eunuchs use this tally as a pass to enter or exit the palace. Imperial Palace in Beijing replica. Economy and daily life in Ming Dynasty. In the early Ming Dynasty, Emperor Taiju implemented encouraging policies to restore and develop production. By the mid to late Ming, growth in the commodity economy led to new modes of production in certain industries, lifestyles, and social values began to change as the pursuit of luxury and individuality became fashionable. <laughs> Map of the Yellow River and the Grand Canal, Ming Dynasty. agriculture and harnessing the Yellow River. In the early Ming Dynasty, Emperor Taiju moved to move people to desolate areas to cultivate wasteland, built water conservancy works, encouraged farming and sericulture, introduced a remitted taxation, and forced labor in war-torn areas. These measures helped to restore and foster agricultural production. During the mid to late Ming, Maize and sweet potatoes were introduced to China and widely grown. In the late Ming, official named Pan Ji Shun successfully, successfully controlled flooding along the Yellow River and aided agricultural production. Hmm. So this is the Yellow River and Grand Canal, huh? Replica of the original which was ink color on silk. Hmm. Is that Beijing? Is that the Great Wall they're showing? And then another city. Tilling at dawn. Ming Dynasty hand scroll. This painting depicts the farming scene at the country south of the Yangtze. So dark, can't see anything. Ming Huai Diang. Collected statutes, Ming Dynasty. Block printed edition, Palace Treasury, Ming Dynasty. Du Ming Huai Diang. Dukai, contending colors, porcelain cup with children playing. Changhua era. That's when they outline in a different color and then fill it with another. Dukai, 
porcelain jar with flower and butterfly design. It's named for the outline in blue usually and then the fill of a different color. The technique for producing dukai contending colors porcelain combined underglaze blue and white, outlines, and overglaze color painting fired twice. Uh, so they had an underglaze outline and then they painted over it with the more vibrant colors because if you fired it with those vibrant reds and yellows they'd become very muted. Red turns maroon for instance. Hmm. First appeared in the Shuangdi era reached its pinnacle in the Chenghua era. Shuangdi era is 1426-1435. Du Kai, contending colors, porcelain stem cup with grape design, Ming Dynasty, Chenghua era. Red lacquer box with carved bird and flower design. Ming Dynasty. Black lacquer. Ewer inlaid with mother of pearl. Jiang Chan Li dates a no noted late Ming craftsman who specialized in lacquer inlay made this vessel. Black lacquered tin body, so decorated with birds, butterflies, and plum blossoms, inlaid with red agate, coral, turquoise, and mother of pearl. Bamboo brush holder, Ju San Song. Kosan enamel ding vessel. Ming. Double gourd shaped Clisson enamel bottle. Clisson enamel goo vessel, intertwining lotus design. Wukai. Porcelain jar with lid and fish. Water plant design. Wukai is five color, right? Blue and white, Wukai, literally five colors. Porcelain was developed in the Jai Jing to Wan Li based on Dukai, contending colors technique and was known for bright colors. Wukai polychrome porcelain vase with dragon among flowers design. Wan Li era. Wukai polychrome porcelain goo vessel with auspicious animal designs. So, as opposed to Songkai of the Tang, which is three colors, usually brown, white, and green but sometimes they have more. It's not a fast rule. Brocade with multicolored cloud dragon and sea wave design. Satin and crane and lingji fungus design. Brocade with floral design. These are all Ming. Handicrafts in the Ming Dynasty silk production developed rapidly and some towns became renowned for their silk products. Advances in weaving resulted in new varieties and patterns in silk textiles. Cotton cloth production expanded greatly, particularly in Songjiang. Elegant and colorful porcelain wares manufactured with new technologies and materials such as Tian Bai, Sweet White, Dukai, contending colors, and Wukai, Polychrome, attained artistic perfection. Metallurgy achieved a level of maturity, resulting in famous Grand Yangle Bell, as well as strong steel weapons and the copper wares of the Shuangdi era. 1426 to 1435. Cotton cloth from Songjiang, Ming Dynasty, Jiangsu Province.
Mm, look at this crown. Sumptuous. Phoenix coronet for Empress Xiao Duan. Unearthed from Dingling Mausoleum, Changping, Beijing. Look at those phoenixes. Foreign relations in the Ming between 1405 and 1433, the Ming government dispatched the famous maritime explorer Zhang He and his fleet on epic making expeditions to the Indian Ocean. Zhang's expeditions resulted in friendly ties with countries in Southeast Asia, South Asia, and Africa, while China maintained close contacts with Korea. Relations with Japan were impaired by Japanese pirate attacks along China's coast and Japan's wars against Korea. After discovering new sea routes in the 16th century, Europeans began coming to China and a new era of direct dialogue opened between Chinese and Western civilizations. Voyages of Zhang He, great Chinese maritime explorer Zhang He, Zhang He, Zhang He, made seven voyages in the Ming Dynasty to the Southeast Asian countries, west of present-day Brunei, and the coastal areas of the Indian Ocean. His expeditions demonstrate the Ming Dynasty achievements in shipbuilding and maritime navigation in terms of scale and distance and were remarkable in the world history of navigation. I think they essentially wanted to get rid of him because he had become too powerful. He wasn't a general. He was a diplomat. And they were mostly voyages of Hey, we're here and we're your overlords. Give us a giraffe. <laughs> and then they sail away. Iron spearhead. This spearhead made by Indonesians to commemorate Chiang Hia features his honorary names inscribed in relief cast on both sides of the blade. Sambo Taijian Shi Yang. Ji Tong Su Yan Yi Zhang He's Journey to the Western Ocean by Luo Mao Deng Wan Li era Zhang He's Sailing Charts Replica Bronze Bells off exhibit Ming Dynasty from Nanping, Fujian Province this bell was cast for Zhang He's seventh journey to bring him luck and safe voyage. He did seven voyages altogether. You can see how far he got in this 1405 to 1433. So he sailed out of Tianjin, I guess, and down through Indonesia, Straits of Malacca, then uh, around. Indian Ocean, Sri Lanka, India, and up to uh, Hormuz and Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and Somalia. Copper incense burner stand, Arabic script, Zhang Di rain, copper ganta and vajra, Shuan Di era, open work copper incense bowl, incense burner. Copper Cannon, Jingtai era. Steel Sword, Ming Dynasty. Thirsty Southern Capital. 
This scroll depicts commercial prosperity in Nanjing during the Ming Dynasty. The commodity economy thrived during the mid to late Ming Dynasty while traditional industrial and commercial cities continued to grow prosperous. Numerous new ones emerged. Silver gradually replaced the less credible Bao Chao paper notes as the major currency. Wealthy merchants formed links with regional trading partners at the same time. Life in the urban and rural areas grew increasingly prosperous and the pursuit of wealth became fashionable. Splendors of the Imperial Capital, Ming Dynasty. This scroll depicts busy market scenes in Beijing during the mid to late Ming Dynasty. Knickknack Peddler, Ming Dynasty. Hanging scroll in color silk. Hu Wai Lu. Copper plate for printing. Daming Tong Xing Bao Cho. Paper currency. Silver ingot. That'll play a role in the opium wars. Coins from the Ming era. An abacus. There's some of the paper money. Standard copper weights of Chengzhou County. Tiangqi era. Dongji weighing apparatus. Wan Li era. This small and precise Dongji used for weighing precious materials like gold, silver, medicine could be used to the fraction of a grain. It's the apothecary system. Grains. I had to memorize that in school. Stupid. White glazed porcelain seated Sakyamuni Buddha. Double gourd shaped blue and white porcelain bottle with eight immortals. Emperor Xiang Zhang enjoying lantern festival. Establishment and growth of the Qing Dynasty. The Qing Dynasty, last imperial dynasty in Chinese history, was founded by the Manchus, an ethnic group from northeast China. The Manchus ruled for nearly 300 years from the time of the first leader, Narhachi, to the last emperor, Puyi. During the early period, 1644, when the Qing capital was moved to Beijing until the break out of the Opium War, 1840. The Manchu rulers established a central authority and achieved unprecedented consolidation and growth for unified multi-ethnic China. Portrait of Chain Long Emperor. Chain Long Emperor, born A Sin Kyoro Hongli, grandson of Kangji Emperor, ruled 1711 to 1799. That's Kangxi there.
Kang Shi Emperor, 1644-1911. Now it's the Qing Dynasty. They don't give the date of his reign. Oh, yeah, they do in the Chinese, 1654-1722. Rise of the Manchus and the founding of the Qing in 1616, Narhachi unified the New Gen tribes and founded the later Jin regime, present day Liaoning province. After Narhachi's son, Huang Taiji, ascended the throne, he renamed the regime Qing and changed the name of his ethnic group from New Gen to Manchu. Huang Taiji's son, Fulin, inherited the throne and became the Shunji Emperor. In 1644, the Qing rulers overthrew the Ming Dynasty, moved the capital of Beijing, and established rule across the country. The Qing Dynasty largely followed the Ming system of governance while gradually modifying it to strengthen central authority. New political military organs were established like the Deliberative Council of Princes and Ministers in the early Qing and the Grand Council in the Yongzhen era. Qing troops were comprised of the Eight Banners and the Green Standard Army. Tales of Zhu Ling, company commander of the Eight Banners. Da Zhang Dian Bo Jade Seal. Da Zhang Dian Hall, present day Chen Yang, Liaoning province, was where Nurhachi, the Huang Taiji, dealt with official business. Tianming Tong Bo coin with Manchu script. After Nurhachi founded the later Jin regime in the first year of the Tang Ming era, Tiao Ming Tongbo coins were circulated in territories under later Jin rule. Tiang Kong Tongbo coin with Manchu script ascended the throne. 1626, new coin called Tiang Kong Tongbo were issued. Wooden imperial plaques are deploying the troops. Qing Dynasty. These plaques are engraved with the posthumous title of Huang Taiji. Inspection tour of Tai Yang. Unifying and consolidating rule over the frontiers. During the reigns of Kang Shi, Yang Zheng, and Qianlong emperors, 1662 to 1795, a separatist rebellion was quelled in the south. Taiwan recovered, revolts in the northwest frontiers were put down, and Tsarist Russia's attempt to expand its territory into China was foiled. I always called Qianlong the dandy emperor, but he actually personally went on a lot of military expeditions. These efforts to strengthen authority over the border areas helped consolidate the unified multi-ethnic country. It's kind of interesting if you get your opinion of an emperor just from art in museums and artifacts like Chain Long, you think, oh, what a dandy. But then you read a history and he went on all these personal military, personally went on military expeditions, expanding territory, and you think, oh. If you read that, you would think he's a, uh, you know, opposite military, you know, strong man. 1721, an imperial censor was designated to supervise officials in Taiwan and report to the central government. This scroll depicts the censor's inspection tour of Taiwan in the Yongzheng era. Portrait of General Zheng Chenggong, original by Huang Ji. General Cheng Cheng Gong's Cannonball unearthed at Fuzhou, Fujian province. This cannonball was used in battles led by Cheng Chong Gong 
against Dutch colonials in Taiwan. It's not a, is that a cannonball? What the, it looks like a vase. I don't think they have the right thing here. It can't be a cannonball. It looks like a can, maybe a canister, like grape shot or something. Black flannel bow case and quiver with silver ornaments. Qing Dynasty. This bow case and quiver were presented in tribute to the Qianlong Emperor in 1756 by a chieftain of the Mongolian Torgut tribe. Muslim areas in the western regions, or at replica. This album depicts life among ethnic groups living in present day Xinjiang. Or it was a collective term in Qing Dynasty referring to four western Mongolian tribes the Dorbits, Chungars, Torgits, and Kalshuts. Transporting provisions in northern campaign replica. During the Kanxi era, the Qing army put down a revolt in northwest, launched by Galadin, leader of Mongolian Junger tribe. This painting depicts troops transporting provisions to the front line. Gold Imperial Edict conferring the title. Seventh Pension Your Denny replica. Silver seal of Jed Ruang Hutu Hutuku Hutuktu. Jed Ruang refers to attendant to the Dalai Lama and Pension Your Denny. This Jed Ruang Hutaku. The Jed Herlong Hutaktu lived in Kondi Ling Monastery, Lhasa. Wooden seal with iron surface for the fifth Dalai Lama. Inscribed Tibetan, Manchu, and Chinese script bestowed upon the fifth Dalai Lama, Chunji Emperor. Gilded figure of the fifth Dalai Lama. Arriving in Beijing, 1652, with 3,000 attendants, the fifth Dalai Lama was received by the Shunji Emperor and stayed in the Yellow Monastery, specially built for him. On his way home the next year, the Emperor presented a gold edict and gold seal conferring upon him the title Dalai Lama. Statue for Tibet, approved by Emperor. 1793, the Qing government formulated a 29-article statute governing political and religious affairs in Tibet. Jade carved imperial edict. This edict engraved on eight jade plates was conferred upon the eight Dalai Lama. 1783, Chainlong Emperor. Text was written Chinese, Manchu, Mongolian, Tibetan script. Jade Imperial Seal with Coiled Dragon Knob. The seal inscribed with Manchu and Chinese scripts was used when Qing emperors issued imperial edicts.
Japanese Bronze Mirror, Edo period, Japan, unearthed from Kayan Temple, Chuanzhou, Fujian. This bronze mirror was brought to China from Japan around the late Ming and as an offering to the Kaiyuan Temple. Relations with Japan and Korea. China and Japan maintained tribute and trade relations in the early Ming. Nevertheless, relations were restrained in the middle Ming when Japan, Japanese and Chinese pirates joined together and began harassing China's coastal areas. By the mid-16th century, the famous general Qi Qi Guang counterattacked and contained the pirates. In the Wanli era, Japan launched two invasive wars against Korea. Upon request from the Korean king, the Chinese army helped the Koreans defeat the Japanese invaders. Steel Saber. The inscription on this saber indicates that it was made for the famous general Qi Qi Guang when he was the regional commander of the Qi Zhen. Resisting Japanese Pirates Replica. The scroll depicts historical scenes 1555 when Chinese soldiers and civilians fought against Japanese pirates along the coast of Zhejiang. It's when uh, Shanghai built its walls to protect against Chinese, uh, Japanese pirates. Poem scroll from Korean friend. In the late Ming Dynasty, Italian Jesuit missionary Matteo Ricci and other Europeans arrived in China. They collaborated with Chinese scholar officials and introduced advanced European science and technologies contributing to the technical development of modern Japan. I think Rishi was actually made, uh, he was put in charge of the astrology department for the, the Ming. One of the cathedrals. Kanji Wan Guo Chuan Tu, complete map of 10,000 countries. It's Matteo Ricci's famous map. I went to Edinburgh um, and visited the National Museum of Scotland. They had an excellent exhibit that was going on this summer. It's still going on till the fall, Ming and the Golden Age. Uh, and they had an interactive display of this map of Matteo Ricci's in full color. And you could press it on a big touchscreen table and all different little information things would pop up and you could follow trade routes. It was really neat. Catering to the Chinese perspective, the cartographer placed China in the center of the map. This map drawn by Matteo Ricci showed Chinese people for the first time that China was one of many countries in the world. There's Africa. Economy and ethic, ethnic cultures in the Qing Dynasty. The early Qing government took measures to restore an economy severely damaged by the chaos of war by the Kangxi, Yongzheng, and Qianlong eras. 1662 to 1795, economic development reached unprecedented heights. So I guess Qianlong died 1795 then. Recovery and growth of agriculture and handicrafts. In the early Qing, Policies to encourage wasteland reclamation and water conservancy helped to restore agricultural production. The Qing Dynasty saw increased rice and wheat yield, the spread of non-indigenous high-yield crops like sweet potato and maize, and expanded cotton, tea, and tobacco cultivation. In handicrafts, the horse hereditary craftsman system was abolished. Textile, ceramics, and iron smelting industries grew in scale. Product variety and manufacturing skills.
illustrations of cotton cultivation. Qing Dynasty rubbing. This album in two sections submitted to Chainlong Emperor by Feng Guangcheng, Governor General of Jili Province, as a report about cotton cultivation and trade. Catching Locust replica. This album illustrating the locust catching experience was painted in 1759, presided over by Li Yuan, the magistrate of Huan Yin Prefecture in Jiangsu Province. Building dam across Yellow River replica. Farming and weaving replica, Qing Dynasty. Wasteland Reclamation License. This license issued in the in 1768 by Yunnan Provincial Administration Commission to a peasant named Sha Lemu at Lijiang Prefecture documents the boundaries and area of his reclaimed land. Gauze with dragon roundel design. Cotton print with floral pattern. Colored cotton fabric with checkered pattern. Gold thread satin with cloud and dragon design. Farming and weaving replica Qin Dynasty. Splendors of Sujo replica. This scroll depicts the busy markets and beautiful landscape of painter's hometown Sujo during the Qianlong era. Sujo is a really nice city, but I like uh, Hangzhou better. Hmm. Wonder if they could, if they show the water gate here. Flourishing trade. The national unity, development, agriculture, handicraft industries contributed to commercial prosperity in the Qing dynasty. Beijing was the political and cultural center, an increasing hub for merchants and commerce. While the south already had bustling cities like Jiangning, which is Nanjing. Yangzhou, Suzhou, Hangzhou, Hangzhou, which is present-day Wuhan, and Guangzhou. Guangzhou's in Guangdong. Then there were new commercial centers on the border towns, Urumqi, which is present-day Xinjiang, so we're having all the trouble now with separatists, and Daijian Lu, present-day Kanding, Sichuan, southwest, I guess, China. Beijing, shop fronts. Hu Yun, street vendors and performers. Wooden signboard for Puji Pawn Shop. Here, an accounts balance sheet for Long Sheng Shop. Chain Long Tongbo Bronze Coins. Yongzheng Tongbo Bronze Coins. Kangji Tongbo Bronze Coins. Ruler. Iron Sliding Weight. 
Rice shipping contract between boatmen and rice trader, Duntee County. In the Qing Dynasty, the customs of ethnic peoples were varied and colorful, including food, dress, entertainment, weddings, and funerals. With social and economic development and unprecedented regional interaction, contact between various ethnic groups increased steadily. Illustrations of a Qing Dynasty wedding. A general view of the vast land replica. This album portrays various ethnic peoples and foreigners living during the Qing Dynasty. The pictures are arranged by region, ethnic background, and gender, each with a brief descriptive history. Chen's illustration of local customs, Dong Qing. This album This album depicts the life and customs of Taiwan indigenous people in the 18th century with descriptive names notes Tibetan copper ewer with dragon shaped handle Wax print cloth of the Miao people. Porcelain vase with lotus design. This vase was produced in a non governmental kiln at Jingdezhen for Tibetans to use in making flower offerings to the Buddha. Embroidered tobacco bag of the Daur people. Kapok cloth of the Li people. Birch bark box with impressed design of the Yoro Chen people. Mongolian knife, Qing Dynasty. Flannel and floral pattern of the Uyghur people. Foreign relations in the Qing Dynasty. In the early Qing government, the early Qing government adopted a closed door policy and strict controls over foreign and domestic trade. During the Kangji era, some coastal cities were designated as trading ports and a government-approved company was set up for foreign trade. Up until the early 19th century, China exported raw silk, tea, and porcelain in large quantities and enjoyed a trade surplus with Western countries. China also maintained close contact with neighboring countries like Korea, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, and India. Nevertheless, as the Western world began to embrace the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, the Qianlong Emperor was still unaware of the widening gap between China and the West, and the sun was setting on the glories of the Qing Empire. Raw silk. Blue and white porcelain dish with pavilion design, Qing Dynasty. This porcelain dish was made for export. A lot of times the exported stuff was kind of cheap. I've usually seen when stuff is for made for export, it's not it's of an inferior quality. It's not always the case. Museums, but it increased I think the quality over time. By the Qing, they had mass-produced techniques. Blue and white porcelain bowl with human figures and workshop marks. Some of the Qing porcelain wares made for export were marked with the producer's name. The mark Yang Yuan Mao Ji found on this bowl was not uncommon. Shi Pu Yaki enamel vase with chrysanthemum and bird design. This vase was a present from Japan to the Qing court. Shipuyaki is a traditional Japanese technique resembling Chinese metal bodied enamelware. This vase was made using the Musen without wire Shipuyaki method of applying enamel directly on a metal body before firing. 
so it's different than close on. So that's actually brass, it looks like. Black lacquer brush holder landscape and gold paint. Gold paint. I guess this would be makie. This brush holder was a present from Japan to the Qing court. Maki. Korean paper in different colors. Korean paper. Known for long and thin fibers. Was comparatively high tensile strength. Came to China through cross-border traders. Gifts. Copper water vessel with incised design. This Indian vessel traveled to China during the Qing. Silver bowl with embossed design. Cambodia present to the Qing court, 18th century. The design features a scene from a traditional Cambodian legend about a golden deer. Mexican silver coins. Wukai polychrome porcelain medicine jar with paired eagles. Iron knife with gold design. Telescope. Saber with le leather sheath and jade handle inlaid with gold and gemstone, 1793. British envoy George McCartney was sent to China to request commercial privileges. And this saber was a gift he presented to the Chainlong Emperor. Nevertheless, the request was was denied. German telescope. Request denied. Porcelain Jun vessel with swallows and gold paint is on. Ching, chain long era. Blue and white porcelain vase with banquet scene, Qing dynasty, Kangxi era. Sky blue glazed porcelain Jun vessel, Qing dynasty. Blue and white porcelain flask with Asta Mana Gala, eight auspicious Buddhist symbols. Dukai contending colors, porcelain vase with sea wave and floral roundel design. Turquoise green glazed porcelain vase. Famille Rose open work, porcelain vase with revolving inner vase. Female rose just means bright peachy colors. <coughs> Rouge glaze porcelain bowls. Yongzheng era. Female rose porcelain vase with plum blossom bamboo and swallow design. Flambe glaze porcelain jun vessel. Enamel bowl with floral design. Let's see. Map of China. What are they showing us? Different provinces. 1820. Start a new video. Culture of the Ming and Qing.